Prologue, Wanborough Manor, Special Operations Executive SOE Training Centre, Surrey, England, 26th of May, 1941. The Irishman stops as the dog plants her paws in front of him and bares her teeth, jagged in the light of a reluctant moon. She has never bared her teeth at him before. Perhaps she can smell the blood on the knife. Flannery steps to one side, off the white pebbled path near where a broken cartwheel, choked by long weeds, slowly rots against the side of the barn. To the other side, an old hand pump drips slowly, constantly, each plunk juddering the reflection of wispy moonlight on the surface of the water in the trough below. The dog moves with him, blocking his way. Good girl, Flannery says softly. Her lips open wider, and she begins to snarl. In a moment, she'll bark, and everything will be lost. Shh! Grable, he says. She's a beagle, Joe's dog, or she was. Now she belongs to Rosie, the horsey woman who lives in one of the cottages on the grounds of the old manor house. The merest thought of Joe causes Flannery to clench his teeth. Everything had been going so well before Joe came along, and my five had suspected nothing. Flannery takes a step backwards, hoping to settle the dog. One bark will wake the inhabitants of the small village. One bark, and everything will have been for nothing. He won't get another chance. What he'll get is a drop, and a sudden stop at the end of a rope. He takes a firm grip on the knife, his palms sweaty despite the cool night air. Good girl, Grable, he says, holding out a hand for her to sniff so she'll know it's him. She knows him. He's a friend. She growls again. Is she simply being protective of her new pups? Or does the beagle really have some kind of sixth sense about people? It is as if she knows what he has just done. Flannery is a bear of a man, thick-necked and broad shoulders, although now in his forties and running to fat. But neither time nor weight has diminished his skills, honed to a fine edge, training new recruits in Churchill's secret army. When the dog draws in a breath, preparing to bark, Flannery is ready. The car is waiting for him near the intersection of the main road to Guildford. It is dark. Its engine is off and it appears to be deserted. But a door opens as he approaches, and a man in a dark suit emerges. He wears an armband with the band blue and white lightning bolt of the BUF, the British Union of Fascists. Flannery's first impression of the man is that he is a weasel. He is short and thin, with a pointed snout and ears. His neck seems too long, with a bend at his Adam's apple. The man looks around carefully, checking they're not being watched, before snapping out a Nazi salute and a quiet, Heil Hitler. When Flannery does not return the salute, the man's paw darts into his jacket and re-emerges with a pistol. Who are you? His voice is thin and reedy. His accent is South London. Put your gun away. I'm the man you're waiting for, Flannery assures him. But don't be expecting any of that Heil Hitler bollocks from me. Are you not a believer in the cause? the man asks, but the pistol disappears back into his jacket. I may dance with the devil, Flannery says, but that doesn't mean I have to kiss him good night.